Hello friends. I'm ready for our daily Disney devotional. I hope you are as well. Today we're reading number 84, Kilimanjaro Safaris. And I would just like to say this used to be a different kind of ride than it is now. And I really used to enjoy it when it was, when we were like hunting the poachers and that's all gone now, but that's okay. Still good to see all the animals. Yes, there's a lot of hype over this new land of Pandora, but there's a lot more to this park than just this. Let's travel to another great ride today. Before Pandora existed, most people typically started with one of two rides. To go to one, you have to go to African land and then in the back left of the park. To go to the other, you have to go to the Asian land and you have to be firm in your choice because it is a long way in between the two of them. You can't just do one right after the other either, at least not without a decent trek in between. So do we want to go right or left? Our family typically chooses left. There's no wrong answer. They are both great rides and we'll talk about the next one, the other one next. We're gonna go left today for a pretty good reason and I'll explain that shortly. So let's talk about Kilimanjaro Safaris. Kilimanjaro Safaris opened with the park in 1998. This is one of a kind ride that is, again, is truly unique to Disney World. It is a definite must do at Animal Kingdom and is typically enjoyed by all guests. And you can't say that about most rides. The safari is a 22 minute ride through the African Savannah to see many different types of animals. You are placed in a 32 rider open bus vehicle to see the animals out both sides throughout your journey. The land used for this ride is extremely vast. It is the largest attraction in all of the Disney parks. In fact, the entire Magic Kingdom could fit inside this one ride's space. <laughs> what? This attraction is 110 acres, while the Magic Kingdom is 107. This ride is similar to what Walt Disney had in mind when he created the Jungle Cruise at Animal Kingdom. As I mentioned several entries ago, Walt wanted to put live animals in that ride. It didn't work out, but it's safe to say he would probably approve of this ride. The ride features many animals that are too many to list here. There were zebras featured on this ride when the park opened, but they were soon removed due to their aggressiveness. They were later reinstated. <laughs> they had a stern talking to, I don't know. Also, when the ride first opened, there were several animal deaths from disease, to toxic exposure, mater maternal killings, and park vehicles. Oh no. It sounds like it took a while for Disney to work out the kinks. <laughs> oh gosh. On one occasion, the ride was closed for 40 minutes due to a hippopotamus death from pneumonia. Oh no. One fun thing to look for on this ride is the small island that houses the flamingos. The island is a large hidden Mickey. Disney Imagineers were very clever in creating this ride. They used temperature tricks such as cool or heated rocks to coax the animals near the road so that guests would be able to see them. Huh. And then hidden barriers to keep animals from getting too close. This is said to be one of the most popular and competitive rides for cast members to work. While riding, you see a few fake boabob trees. Um, I don't know how to say that. There are no real ones on this ride. Real ones of that size would be thousands of years old. These fake ones hold cameras to observe the action in the ride. There's only one real boabob, boab tree is near the Tusker House restaurant in the entrance of the safari. When the ride first opened, there was a whole story attached to this ride about animal poaching. This is what I was talking about. 
Early tests even showed fake corpses of an elephant. Okay, I never saw that. <laughs> but this proved to be too dark. So a happy ending was added where the poachers were caught. The storyline, however, was removed a few years ago. One reason our family tries to do this right early in the morning is because we like to get the first look at the animals. They seem to be more active and visible in the morning. I've done the safari all times of the day and I've never had the same ride. The animals are never in the same place or doing the same thing. This ride is always changing. Again, you can't say the same thing about other rides. Unfortunately, oh, unlike this ride, which is ever changing, God does not change. Unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, many people, even strong Christians, think God will change for them. Many think God will cater to their needs and understand if they want to change or tweak his word. However, listen to what 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4 says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachings to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. I think that time is now. Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus is doing this is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Numbers 23, 19 tells us that God doesn't change his mind like a man. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says that the Bible will stand forever. Change can be good. I particularly like, I particularly like the safari ride because it does change each, each time. No two rides are the same, meaning I could ride it repeatedly with different experiences. God is not like that. He won't change his word, sorry, or his plan to cater to our needs. We must remember this and study his word diligently to know what he wants for us. I hope you enjoy the safari as much as I do. It's a great reminder of God's creation as well. Keep in mind as you ride, the same God who created these animals and trees and beautiful landscapes is the same God who created you and me. He will be that same God forever without changing. The end. I will see you guys tomorrow.